And topic number four today comes to us from Morgan from South Korea. Ooh, South Korea, cool. Hello, Cody. How do professional swimmers post-college pay for their training and food slash rent? Um, do they pay to keep swimming with their college team? If they aren't super famous, <laughs> I love I love how you wrote that as if all super famous swimmers make tons of money, but we'll get into that. Do they work during the day and train in the morning and night? For Kata Ledecky, I noticed U of F, that's University of Florida, says she is a volunteer coach. I assume that means she can swim there for free in exchange for some coaching, thanks. All right, and this is a great question. Thank you so much, Morgan. Um, yeah, I've been asked this a lot. So I can't speak for other nations and other countries. Like Chad moving to that training facility in Frankfurt, Germany. I know he gets funding, um, so he's getting paid to go there and that stuff is taken care of for him, but he's one of the most established Olympians of all time. So that's a little different for most people that transition to become a pro out of college. Um, let me give you an example. So it's it's different, it, like across the United States, it's different everywhere. Some programs will not accept professionals unless they trained at a certain university. For example, uh, University of California, Berkeley, right? The Cal Bears, the Golden Bears, where Ryan Murphy swam, where Kathleen Baker swam, where Nathan Adrian swam. That program is an in-house program only. So you, in order to train at the Berkeley facility under Olympic coach Dave Durden, you have to be a golden bear yourself. Like you have to go through that collegiate program. That's the only way that works, okay? Um, now, do they pay money to continue training there? I don't know. My honest answer is I don't know. I know a lot of the people that swim there. I've just never asked. I'm not sure. I do know that there are other programs that do accept professionals um, say you graduate from a, say you graduate from a smaller school that 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 does really really well. I'll give you an example. A friend of mine, a girl named Emily McClellan. Okay, she went to a really small school in Wisconsin, uh, but she was one of the fastest swimmers in the country, like good enough to maybe make an Olympic team. This was she was she's my age. Okay, so this was like right around 2016. She moved to go and train at USC, University of Southern California. At the time, Dave Salo was the coach there. When she moved there, along with some other swimmers that transitioned to be professionals, they had to they had to pay like they had to pay a coaching fee, uh, a fee to be a part of that team, to be a part of that club. So so they did have to pay. Um, now your question, how do those swimmers afford rent? Um, how do those swimmers afford groceries? You gotta work. I mean I, I'm lucky, I'll speak for Indiana, like here. Um, we have accepted, our program has accepted very few athletes to come train here as a professional that didn't actually attend our university. Very, very, very few. We've had maybe like five or six total over the last like 10 years that I can think of. So Ray is super picky. I mean, quite honestly, like Ray has turned down Olympic medalists to train, to train here. Coach Ray Luz, head coach of Indiana, has turned down Olympic medalists who have asked if they could come and train here. And, now, and I know that that's the case for other Olympic coaches across the United States as well. Um, but no, we do not pay to train here. Like I do not have to pay to train at the, at the facility um, and neither do the other pros, but that's different. Some places do. Like you asked, do some, do some people who graduate from their fourth year of college and wanna continue swimming to go to the Olympic trials, some places do have to pay. Um, you know, like for example, David Marsh, one of the most famous coaches in, in all of swimming, um, has had at various times certain pro groups at certain places. Like he was at Swim Mac in North Carolina for a long period of time. He had a group out in, 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 in California for a while. Like those athletes paid to be coached by him and paid to be a part of that facility. So, so the answer to your question is, it varies place to place. Like every everything is different. Some coaches are gonna charge athletes even if they are their own athletes, some coaches not, you know, it very, very much depends. But how do those athletes make money? That's a whole other question. I mean, my first two years, Matt, about my about a year and a half after graduating college, I had no money. I had no sponsors and no no family money to fall back on. Like I was broke. I had more zero dollars in my bank account than, than anything else. Um, and I had to wash cars, detail motorcycles, and um, flip stuff from flea markets, <laughs> no joke, just so that I could buy peanut butter and make rent so that I could train 
and hopefully make a national team. And then eventually, you know, I won nationals and I was able to get a few sponsors and get a little more money, but it wasn't really a lot. Um, and we can dive into that stuff, more of that kind of stuff in, in future videos. But yeah, that's, I, I hope that answers your question. I mean, you know, the, Katie Ledecky, you asked about Katie Ledecky at U of F. She is listed as a volunteer coach. Um, and there are benefits to that. Um, it's going to depend on the rules of the university, the rules of the conference, and then also the NCAA has their own rules. But as a volunteer coach, she can absolutely train for free. I mean, she can travel with the team. So likely like they might go to meets, they might go to competitions and she can travel with the team, you know, on the team's dime, on their bus. And, and that's not against a violation because she's directly on roster associated with the team. And then maybe she can exhibition some races, right? Like at a college dual meet, um, they might take 10 minutes during a break in between sessions and the pros can race and then Katie can do her 500. You know, she can't at college level meets, Katie's not gonna be able to dive in and race the college swimmers that she trains with or the college swimmers of other universities that are there at that meet. That's not legal. But with her being a volunteer coach, she can go to those meets and then potentially swim exhibition basically by herself or against other pros there. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of things like that. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of places that will add on fifth year swimmers as professionals, as volunteer assistant coaches so that they get benefits like that, right? So yeah, um, that's a really great question. There's a whole lot to pick up out there, a whole more we can talk about. So if you've got more questions in that world, send me an email to codymillershow at gmail.com and, and we can get into it. But um, thank you, Morgan, for that question. Super cool, you're from South Korea. Okay. If you enjoyed this clip, please hit that subscribe button. Full episodes of The Cody Miller Show air every Monday morning uninterrupted. I'll see you all there. Thanks.